Hey guys, welcome. In my previous video, we had a deep dive look into manifest file for fill template. Today, we are going to do a deep dive into PCF manifest file for dataset template. To check out my previous video for manifest file on fill template, click the notification on the top right corner of this video. Link will also be available in the description of this video. So, what is a dataset template? Now, if you want to replace your view or a subgrid with a custom control, then you need to use dataset template while initiating your PCF custom control. Here is the example of dataset custom control built by Natraj. As you can see, we have changed the view from a regular looking view into something different altogether, where each contact record is shown as a card. When you use dataset template, you are provided with the base manifest file setting. Some of the properties are same from fill template manifest file, like resource tag or feature usage tag. So we are not going to focus on them, but rather on the dataset tag. Dataset tag represents a set of records from the grid or the view it is configured on. It has name. This is what you would refer in your code. Then we have display name key. This is what will be shown to the user when configuring your control. It can contain spaces. Description key will be shown to the user with more detailed content of what your dataset is expecting or how it will work. CDS dataset options is a very important attribute and it can contain a bunch of items like display command bar. When it is set to true, it will show the buttons that are available on the command bar when you're looking, it, uh, looking on the subgrid. Display view selector is again a Boolean field which controls whether the out of the box view selector is to be shown or hidden when loading this control. Display quick find search Again, a Boolean field that controls if the search input is shown or hidden. Dataset tag has child tag named as property set. Now this is similar to the property tag of the field template. This tag helps you to explicitly configure a column from the dataset, which in turn helps you to get the data in your code using two key methods one is get formatted value and the other one is get value. So when you're configuring this control on a data set, you would see that these are the properties that, you would, that would be shown as an input when configuring the data set. And as you can see, it has all the attributes from the property tag, which we have seen in the field template manifest file. So required usage of type, it can also have of type group, uh, description key and uh, display name key as well. Now, if you have used property set tag, then when you try to configure this control in CDS, you would see those many properties showing up to be configured on the control. So I'm gonna change the grid from a regular grid and then add a custom control. So I've created a custom control called dataset type manifest. I'm gonna add it. And then as you can see, my dataset grid is the name of my dataset, which is shown from here. Then the name property is coming from the display name. And the number property is coming from the display name again. Now, name property is a single line text and number property is a whole number. And both are set to true and both are set with a usage as bound. So when I click on this configuration, it shows me only to only one thing to do here, which is to bind a value to a field. And then it shows me the fields that are of single line text. And I can bind it to say name. And similarly for the number property, 
if I open the configuration, it shows me only the whole number fields. And I can bind it to number of employee and that's it. That's how the property set works. Going back to the control manifest file, rest of the tag are similar to what we have seen in the field template manifest file, like the resources tag, the feature usage tag. But I just wanted to go over the data types again that are supported by the custom controls as of today. So these are the data types that are supported by custom controls today. And because we are talking about data types and we are talking about property sets, and because property sets can have type groups, we are still following the same compatible data type for Canvas app. So if you're building a Canvas app, you have to consider that to group the data types, they have to be in the compatible type list. That's all for today, guys. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any suggestion, then leave a comment below.